Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the uh, automotive lecturers down at Unitech um, in Auckland, New Zealand. And this is one of my basic skills videos. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to wire up an old but brand new, never used, plug, 240 volt plug. Now, I know that this isn't directly related to cars, but it's a really useful um, workshop task, something that you're going to need to know how to do if, you're, if you've got an English garage and you're working on your car, you'll find that these plugs will over time get damaged and need to be replaced and you're going to need to know how to wire these up. Now, um, 30 or 40 years ago, wired up one of these plugs, you know, as we most of us were born with that ability, we were just able to do it. I remember at school at about 12, 13 years old, the first lesson with my physics teacher, he gave us each one of these plugs and a bit of wire. And we say, he said, go, see who could wire one of these plugs up the fastest. And I won. I was really chuffed with that. Nobody ever showed me how to do it. I just learnt, and I've been wiring up plugs for years. You know, I had my first shed at the age of nine. I thought, it's just what I wanted to do. So, anyway, I'm going to show you the correct way of wiring up one of these English uh, 240 volt mains plugs. Um, just in case, for some reason, you need to replace one on one of your power tools. So here we go. Okay, so the first job, and this one's actually come with you. I've still got the original little wiring diagram there, so maybe that's going to be quite useful for you. You'll be able to press pause on the video and make a note of all that. Very useful. Leave that down there. Okay. So the first thing to do is to open up the plug, and I actually haven't done one of these for about seven years. That's how long I've been away from England. But you'll find, when you compare this to a New Zealand plug, if any of you are familiar with those, or plugs from other places, you will find that they're a bit more substantial. They're really quite well made. Golly, this brings up memories. Okay, so first job is to whiz round and just slacken off all the little wire clamps. And you can see there, look, that's one of them backed off. Don't take the screws all the way out because they're really fiddly. Just make sure that they're fully open. There we go. And it's a good idea to have a decent little flat screwdriver for this job. Okay, now, on an English plug, the lengths of the wires need to each be different. So we're going to measure the longest one, which is the one that has to travel all the way up to the earth. Now, the insulation, the black casing of this wire needs to end just after the clamp. So if we take that right to the top of that, the earth there, look, and mark it with our thumb, we can always cut it down, so we'll do a little bit extra. There we go, that'll work. And we're just going to nibble away at that black insulation, the, the outer insulation. We don't want to go too deep, so you can just to say, cut through it. It's going to take, you know, couple of girls are getting this right, I think, if it's your first time. Just going to nibble our way through. We don't want to risk damaging the insulation of the wires underneath. That's really, really important. Uh, if you were to use a blade, then there's a real good chance you're going to cut it. Now, once you've nibbled through, just keep working it like that, and it's going to snap the remaining of that rubber that plastic, that cut, that insulation. That's the plan. And once you get it nearly gone, you can just give it a pull and it's, it'll come off. Now, three wires in there. Um, slightly different to normal colours, actually. We've got in here um, a black, a green, and a white. Okay, well, that's going to be... Green is always earth. Black will be neutral. And the white, in this case, believe it or not, will be the live. Okay, slightly different to what's on the piece of cardboard because this is a New Zealand wire, don't forget. Okay, so the bit of cardboard will relate directly to English stuff. And what we need to do is, the green one is the longest one, so we just offer it over the plug, and we can bear the wire back about, you know, eight mil or so. That's all we need off the end of them on that one. There we go. Now, the, the neutral is the black wire, and the neutral's 
Probably the shortest. Now, sure, we could we could leave a big loop inside the plug, but that looks a bit crappy. So we can probably cut about 10 mil off the end of that, and then bear it back. So we'll cut a bit off there, and then we'll take our eight mils of insulation off. There we go. And we'll wrap that one round. Now, lastly, is live. That's the white wire on this one. And if you see there, look, we can just trim it off directly above that clamp, which is about there. And we can bear that back again, 8 mil, 6 to 8 mil. There we go. Okay. Now, the first one to go in always for me, uh, let's do the neutral one first down here, look. Now, with the English plug, you do have the benefit of being able to take these out but you'll find that that actually can make life a bit more difficult because trying to get them back in when they're all wired up is extremely hard. So into there will go the black, the neutral. Now if you find like I've got there, see I've got some exposed wire, it's all the way in the plug but it's still sticking out, just pull it back out, just trim off a little bit off the end, make sure you've just wrapped them back together again and then you can stick that in the plug. You need to really ensure that there's no possibility of any exposed wires. That's one. Now, earth green is the next. Let's do... Let's do the earth last actually on this particular plug. So it's a while since I've done one of these. And sometimes you'll find that long nose pliers can be helpful just to help you get the wires in if they're a bit stubborn. So that's the live now in. Again, make sure they're good and tight. And then finally is going to be the earth. Now just make sure you've got no tails hanging around, no strands of wire sticking out and that wants to go all the way up. Now a bit more on the bolt. There we go. Just retighten that again. Give it a kink on the end and in she goes. That's pretty good. Quite happy with that. Again, good and tight. Now, what you need to do is make sure that all these wires are down in their clamps. But we've also got this really good cable clamp that we've got to sort out. So again, get your screwdriver. Just slacken off one of them and undo the other completely. And then that will swing round. Put your wire in, swing it back, and then you can do that up. Okay, make sure you're in the right position. Get that tightened up. You don't have to over tighten it because you don't want it to break the plastic. But just make sure that it's clamping that wire pretty well. Okay, there we go. Good. So all the wires are in. We've just got to make sure that they're all down in their grooves. So that's the negative. That one, push the green one down. Great job. Okay. So that's what it should look like once you've finished. And that's all done by putting the cover back on. Now, um, you may have noticed that this particular one comes with, what's a few size fuses that got in it? Let's have a look. So all English plugs are fused and that's a 13 amp fuse. Now that's great if it's a power tool. But if it's a little side light, you know, a, a lamp for the side of your bed or just a, a little table lamp, a 13 amp fuse is way too much. It's not going to fully protect that lamp and you'd be choosing a much smaller fuse. But for the workshop, 13 amp, perfect. And that's the fuse in. And that's the beauty of English plugs is we have a fuse for every single plug in the house, which is fantastic. So safe. That then goes back in there and all that's left to do now is to tighten up that center screw. 
and again don't over tighten it. I know it's a, it's a brass insert on the side, it's quite a good quality plug this one, but um, you know, don't go mad. There we go. So there you go, that's an English plug wired up. And just finally, just to show you again that little piece of cardboard, you can see all the details on there. Okay, really important that you wire it up the right way. Now remember, normally in England, the wiring that you're going to get, the earth will be green and yellow, twin colour, green and yellow for the earth. Your live will be brown normally, and your, your earth, sorry, your, your negative will be blue. So your negative is blue, your live is brown, and your earth is normally yellow and green together, two, two colours on one wire. Uh, the wire that I used is a bit different because we're in New Zealand and that kind of stuff's not available here. Um, so there you go. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, I know it's not directly related to automotive. It's not, you know, actually involved in fixing a car or fixing a motorcycle or fixing a quad bike, but actually um, setting up your workshop and knowing how to maintain your workshop to look after things. And if you've got a damaged plug on one of your power tools, for your main, main supply power tools, then change it. You know. I have a few angle grinders which over the years I've had to not just change the plugs but change the leads as well. The leads get damaged, they get burnt, they get cut into and you don't want to get an electric shock. You know, in New Zealand our plugs don't have fuses. So it's pretty dodgy. You know, if you're touching the mains wire you're going to get a nasty belt and it's not going to blow the fuse. At least with an English one there's a chance you might just pop the fuse if it shorts out through your body and that's going to help save you. Um, but yeah, there you go. hope you found it helpful. Um, not everybody knows how to wire up a plug. If you do, that's great. You don't need to watch this video. But if you don't, then hey, maybe you do now. Okay, uh, any questions and comments, leave them down at the bottom and I'll do my very best to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Over and out.